This is Miss Pauling, assistant to the administrator, supervisor to the mercenaries, and more or less their de facto leader. Miss Pauling has been a character in the Team Fortress 2 storyline, going all the way back to the war update in 2009. And despite appearing in many of the comics, and even starring in the longest TF2 movie, Expiration Date, not too much is known about her. In fact, we don't even know her first name. But artwork included with the TF2 fight song's vinyl record seems to indicate that her first name begins with an F, as we see a photo attributed to an F Pauling. It's a little bit weird how we know the administrator's first name, and not her last name, and then it's the opposite for Miss Pauling. But at the very least, that picture would indicate that Miss Pauling has a planned first name that's just not been revealed yet. The first time we saw Miss Pauling was in the War comic from the previously mentioned War Update. Her design differs from what we've seen in later comics, but much of that can be attributed to the different comic artists. What she's seen wearing has differed over time as well. In her first appearance, she wears a purple and green shirt with darker purple pants, and then from then on she's generally seen in the comics just wearing a purple dress. In expiration date, in her appearances on the main menu, she wears a purple and light purple shirt with a darker purple skirt. So, lots of purple going on, which is obviously meant to be like a combination of the red and blue from the red and blue teams, which is the same thing with the administrator. And speaking of expiration date, that was the first time we ever got to hear Miss Pauling's voice. Pauling is played by Ashley Birch. Birch has done voice work in several different games, such as Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn, and Tiny Tina in the Borderlands series. She has also voiced and written for various animated shows, voicing characters like Enid in OKKO, OK and writing for shows like Adventure Time and Glitch Text. She also has a web show and YouTube channel called Hey Ash Whatcha Playin' that even had a TF2 episode three years before Birch began voicing Miss Pauling. Hey Ash, whatcha oh, playin'? Ow! I broke your stupid crap! The first time we were introduced to Miss Pauling as a character was also the first time we ever saw the administrator in person, and I believe this was also the first time it was made completely clear that she was pulling the strings for both the red and blue team simultaneously. In that comic, we see Miss Pauling bring the news to the administrator that the red Delman and the blue soldier have become friends. She is then in charge of contacting Saxon Hale for new weapons and bribing Demo and Soldier to fight each other. When arriving at Demo's home, he appears to recognize her but not be very familiar with her. So we could probably assume that they haven't worked together for that long at this point. And then, while she wasn't seen in a new comic again until 2011, the administrator does directly mention her in the December 22, 2010 blog post. She informs the reader that the free stocking stuffer key given out to all players was in fact Miss Pauling's idea. Miss Pauling makes her second comic debut in Meet the Director from May 2011. In that comic, she travels with the director to interview the mercenaries. She tells the Red Team that they're being filmed for PR purposes for the people of the Badlands area. But in reality, they're actually just being watched and interviewed so the administrator can learn more about them for blackmail purposes and to keep them in line. Miss Pauling initially questions whether or not that's needed because most of the Merc's IQs are subnormal. About a little over a month later, Meet the Medic was released, and while never outright confirmed, a woman who very strongly resembles Miss Pauling can be seen in the background behind Medic's doves. She then briefly appears in 2011's A Smithsmith Story comic, when Spy calls her wanting to get out of his court-mandated community service. I would say this is probably the beginning of when we really see Miss Pauling start working more closely with the mercenaries, and her appearances not always being directly tied in with the administrator. 2012 saw some major storyline developments as the plot of Man vs. Machine kicks off. After the Man Brothers are killed and the mercenaries lose their jobs, Saxon Hale then rehires them to defend Manco. Miss Pauling delivers the video message to them and further gives them instructions. In December 2012, we see the robot war continue in the comic Shadow Boxers. The cover of that comic actually appears to show a model of Miss Pauling, one that more closely resembles her comic appearance than what we later see in Expiration Date. And in that comic, it's beginning to look like the team isn't going to be able to defend every Manco location. Soldier then tells Miss Pauling that he knows where the robots are going to attack next because he infiltrated their base. So Soldier, Heavy, and Pauling then don some robot disguises and break into Grey Gravel Co. They discover the new Mecha Engineer, which immediately recognizes them as human when the other robots could not. It just kinda ends there, but we can assume they escape. 2013 began the TF comic series, in which Miss Pauling plays a major part. In the first issue, Grey Man takes control of Manco, the team disbands, and as Miss Pauling goes to deliver the news to the administrator, she discovers the administrator is already gone, leaving only a message telling Pauling to hide. Six months later, she begins her mission to get the team back together, starting with Soldier and Pyro and then Demo Man. The rest of the TF comic series follows Pauling and the mercenaries track down the rest of their team, and everything that goes along with that. But we'll get back to that a bit more in the timeline bit. Because TF2 updates do not take place in chronological order story-wise, we kinda get thrown from the MVM storyline to expiration date in 2014, which we can assume takes place during the Gravel War. 
And then 2015 was actually a pretty Pauling centric year, with the two biggest updates, Gunmetal and Tough Break, featuring her in comics and update artwork. And also tons of new Miss Pauling voice lines for the new contract system where Miss Pauling delivers contracts for the player to complete. And that year she also appears in the Halloween comic Gargoyles and Gravel where she attends the Mercenaries Halloween party. And then Miss Pauling makes a brief appearance in 2016's Showdown comic where she walks by the heavy as he's breaking into the administrator's lair. We learn in her personal ad in the Two Fort Reader that Miss Pauling works 364 days a year. She mentions again an expiration date that she only gets one day off. However, during the Tough Break update, the New Mexico Department of Labor discovers she isn't given any time off and is sent on a state mandated vacation. Which she takes, but ends up working the whole time anyway. During that time off, she visits the Alamo, Slurry Beach, Granny's Old Fashioned Bomb Factory, the Two Fort Public Library, Morasmus's Ancient Sumerian Carnival, the Manco Recalled Product Outlet Mall, takes a ride on Poopy Joe's Rapid Descent, visits the John Doe Raccoon Sanctuary, and scouts very own Tom Jones Museum. According to voice lines, she also goes to a beer garden with Demo, a ladies book club, takes a boxing class, goes sightseeing in Two Fort, camping with Soldier, goes on a cave tour, attends an assistance conference with Mr. Bidwell, plays some gargoyles and gravel with Scout, goes to a gun show with Heavy, enters a hot dog eating contest, goes to a key party, takes piano lessons from Spy, sees Shakespeare Cleese in the park, learns how to sew a heart inside of another heart from Medic, goes on a vision quest with Sniper, and does wine tasting with Spy. So a, a very busy vacation, though she's also delivering contracts throughout the whole thing. As the years went by, Miss Pauling's relationship with the mercenaries became closer. But even from the beginning, she's always acted as the straight man to the more deranged characters she interacts with. The craziness of the mercenaries, or the obliviousness of Saxon Hale, and the over-the-top cruelty of the administrator. She's outwardly much nicer and more approachable than the person she works for, and is also kind of a big nerd. Someone who's into board games and gun catalogs, and someone who gets excited over new clipboards. But despite all that, she's incredibly loyal to the administrator and will carry out her demands without question, including bribing the soldier and demo to fight each other, framing people, sanding fingerprints off and yanking molars out of corpses, and murdering the director and countless other people. While she likes the team she works with even to the point where she hangs out with them on her time off, she's still more than willing to pit them against each other, lie to them, and do pretty much whatever the administrator tells her to do. She's worked for the administrator for about a decade according to the admin herself, or as Miss Pauling puts it, her whole life. Though I'm sure that's not literal. We don't know what Miss Pauling was doing before she started working with the admin, or where she's from, or even how old she is. We could probably assume she's around the same age as Scout, who ranges from 23 to 27 between the Gravel Wars and the comics. We hear about her drinking and going to bars, so it's pretty safe to assume she's over 21. And New Mexico's legal drinking age has actually been 21 since 1934. Much of the United States didn't change that until the 1980s. So if she's in her 20s and has been working for the administrator for the past 10 years, she probably started sometime in her teens. Why does she do this job? We don't really know. Even Miss Pauling doesn't know for sure what the administrator's ultimate plan is. But Pauling trusts her and hopes she has a place for her when the plan is ultimately fulfilled. Pauling even seems to be fully aware of just how evil the administrator is. Though I guess that would be kind of hard to miss. And somehow she thinks all of this is worth working 364 days a year at a dangerous job. And the administrator does demand a lot. This voice line even reveals that the admin will invite Pauling over for dinner just to have it be an ambush. of an employee review. Anyway, got time for a contract? But uh, I guess all of this has become normal to Miss Pauling, and apparently she hopes it's gonna be worth it in the end. The mercenaries on the other hand, they're mostly just in it for the money. And while they don't seem particularly fond of the administrator, they all do seem to like Miss Pauling and respect her role. Okay, well, Sniper is very willing to poison and threaten her for information when he no longer works for her employer, but uh, after that they're cool. And despite calling Soldier's plan to infiltrate Grey Gravel Co. terrible, Heavy also tags along because Miss Pauling is going too. Possibly Heavy's protectiveness over his sister's coming through for Pauling there. And then there's Scout, who uh, really likes Miss Pauling. From the first time they're seen together and meet the director, Scout is already hitting on her. And the whole plot of Expiration Date revolved around Scout asking Miss Pauling out. Despite Miss Pauling being very dismissive of Scout's advances, Expiration Date does end with some hope for Scout, where they do kind of agree to go on a date. However, as of the TF comic series, which takes place after that, it appears to not have gone anywhere. And that might be because Miss Pauling's not into dudes. Well, maybe. According to Jay Pinkerton, one of the writers of the TF comics, Miss Pauling is gay. This has never been explicitly made clear in the comics or the story, but if anybody would know, it would be the writers of the comics. 
Is a Twitter post considered super canon? I don't know, but even if she was, I don't think that would stop Scout from trying. Maybe she has like a Mr. Smithers and Mr. Burns thing going on with the administrator? Uh, I certainly hope not. Alright, now to get that out of our heads, we're gonna move on to the Miss Pauling timeline, where we attempt to put together the important events in Miss Pauling's life into some kind of order. Around 1962, a Miss F. Pauling begins working for the administrator. If Scout's claims of knowing Miss Pauling for six years are true, then Miss Pauling and Scout would have met sometime around 1967. In 1968, our current group of mercenaries begins fighting the gravel war for red and blue. Miss Pauling works for the administrator to oversee them. At some point, the administrator hires a director to film the mercenaries in order to keep tabs on them. After filming is complete, she murders the director in a cave and disposes of his body. After Poopy Joe's tragic death in that rocket accident, which was discovered to be missing its Australian fuel supply, the administrator and Miss Pauling attend a Senate investigation into what happened to that Australium. Later, Miss Pauling contacts Saxon Hale for new weapons and is tasked with bribing the Red Devil Man into fighting his new friend, the Blue Soldier. When it's discovered that Miss Pauling has never had time off, the New Mexico Department of Labor forces her to go on vacation. She continues to work during the whole thing. When Miss Pauling is looking for incentives to get the mercenaries to do their jobs, she meets with Saxon Hale to get some new guns. He shows her his fancy new skinned guns that are only for his top clientele, which doesn't include her. So she breaks in later that night and steals those guns. In 1971, medic and engineer discover that teleportation may be giving the team tumors. They think they only have three days left to live, and as his dying wish, Scout wants to go on a date with Miss Pauling. Instead of actually asking her, he sounds the briefcase alarm and Pauling comes to the scene. A giant bread monster is made, they all fight it, and then it ends on a fairly positive note for Scout and Miss Pauling. Later that year, Miss Pauling attends a Halloween party with the mercenaries. She, Scout, Heavy, and Soldier play gargoyles and gravel. When the robot war breaks out, she delivers a video message from Saxon Hale to the mercenaries that they're now being hired to defend Manco. In December of that year, Miss Pauling, Soldier, and Heavy break into Grey Gravel Co. and discover the new Mecha Engineer. In 1972, Grey Man takes control of Manco. The team disbands, the administrator disappears, and Miss Pauling goes into hiding. Six months later, she begins her mission to reform the team. Pauling dresses up as a police officer and fake arrests Soldier after he murders Tom Jones. They then lure Pyro away from its corporate job and find Demo at his home. The gang rescues Spy and Scout from execution, and they split up to retrieve Sniper and Heavy. The others head to Russia, and Demo and Pauling head to Australia to find Sniper. When they arrive, Sniper poisons them and ties them up, demanding to know where his real parents are. Miss Pauling informs him that they're on their way to see his real parents anyway. So they all head to New Zealand, where they eventually get captured by the TFC team and Medic. They're brought back to Grey Gravel Co. and held prisoner. But Soldier and Jana break them out. A dying grey man then pleads with Pauling to stop the administrator, claiming that anything bad he would have done with the Australium wouldn't be nearly as bad as what the administrator would do. Miss Pauling makes a speech in defense of the administrator, but grey man dies during it without her noticing. And so they escape, they beat the TFC team, and reveal that their team name is actually Team Fortress. And that's where it ends. Will the administrator's plan ever actually be revealed? Psh, I don't know, maybe. But either way, that was the complete history of Miss Pauling. And if I left some stuff out that was directly revolving around the administrator, or things very strongly implied to be revolving around her, it's mostly because I'm saving that for the administrator episode. And speaking of, who should be next? The administrator? Saxon Hale? The Mann family? Trevor again? Decide for me, I can't do it. And if you want to see these videos early, or just want to give me money so I can obsessively read over every single piece of TF2 media in existence, then consider joining my Patreon, like these fine fellows. Especially cool stuff, Varric and Captain Forex. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and peace out, dogs. Yeah.